In this video, we're going to look more into the distribution of fixed points for random permutations. We assume you've seen the previous video about the expected value of a random permutation. Links in the usual places. Recall our setup. We had n students and returned their homework randomly. Everywhere, capital X is the number of students who get their own homework back. Our question was about the expected number of students to get their own homework back, and we used a tool called derangements, permutations with no fixed points. We even discovered that regardless of the number of students, the expected value of x is 1. We left off asking about the variance of that fixed point distribution for a given n. To answer that, and a bit more, we're going to use another combinatorial tool. Define b sub r, the rth bell number, as the number of ways of partitioning a set of size r into sets. That's a bit abstract. More concretely, it's the number of ways of putting r distinguishable prizes into bags. We can use as few or as many bags as we wish, but every prize must be in some bag. Let's say we have three prizes. We can put them all in one bag, or put two in one and one in the other, three ways of doing that, or we can put each in its own bag. That means b sub 3 equals 5. Notice that the bags themselves are interchangeable, so putting prizes 2 and 3 into bag 1 and prize 1 into bag 2 is considered the same as putting prize 1 into bag 1 and prizes 2 and 3 into bag 2. That means when necessary, we can order the bags by the smallest prize in them. From here on out, we will always put the bags in this order. Let's look at a quick bell identity and make sure we understand what bell numbers count. b sub r plus 1 is the sum from k equals 0 to r of r choose k times b sub r minus k. How can we show this combinatorially? By the definition of bell numbers, the left-hand side counts the number of ways of putting r plus 1 prizes into bags. For the right-hand side, we have to count that a little more carefully. We ask ourselves how many prize bagging configurations have exactly k additional prizes in bag 1 with the first prize. Here, that first prize is the ace. Well, first choose k of the r prizes, put them in bag 1. r choose k ways of doing that. For any choice of additional prizes in the bag with the ace, the remaining r minus k prizes need to be in any number of bags, which is counted by b sub r minus k, again by the very definition of bell numbers. Don't forget that b sub 0 is 1. There's one way of putting no prizes into bags. Don't touch prizes or bags. That, perhaps vacuously, counts as a prize bagging. Summing over all possible values of k gives the right-hand side. That wasn't so bad. OK, let's talk for a moment about moments. Moments give a sense of the shape of a distribution. The first moment is the expected value. The second gives the variance, a measure of spread of the random variable. Higher moments give more subtle corrections, like the skewness of a distribution, or how fat the tails are. We use mu to denote the expected value of a random variable x, aka the average. Recall that the variance of a random variable can be calculated by e of x minus mu squared, or e of x squared minus mu squared. More generally, a probability distribution has central moments where the random variable is shifted to the mean, e of x minus mu to the r and raw moments, e of x to the r, where it's not shifted. If you know all the central moments, you can calculate the raw moments, or vice versa. I'll leave that as an exercise to you to figure out. The main theorem of this video shows us how to calculate the raw moments for the fixed point distribution. 
ready? Recall that the probability that exactly k points are fixed is given by p of x equals k is 1 over n factorial times n choose k times d sub n minus k. That d sub n minus k is the number of derangements on n minus k things, like we saw in the last video. When r is at most n, the rth raw moment, which is given by the sum of k to the r times the probability that x equals k, given by this expression, e of x to the r is the sum of n choose k times k to the r times d sub n minus k all over n factorial equals b sub r. It's equal to the rth bell number. So all of the moments of order less than or equal to n are independent of n. We saw that last time for the expected value, but now we'll know it's true for all of them. Once we establish the main theorem, we can quickly answer the variance question we raised earlier. The variance is e of x squared minus e of x squared, which is b sub 2 minus b sub 1 squared, which is 2 minus 1 squared, which is 1. The variance of the number of students getting their own homework back is 1, just like the expected value was 1. So now we just have to prove that theorem. To do so, let's clear that denominator so we end up with a two-variable integer identity. b sub r times n factorial is the sum of k from 0 to n of n choose k times k to the r times d sub n minus k. All right. Now that we know the identity we're aiming for, let's put on our combinatoricist's hat and prove the main theorem by showing that the two sides count the same set. When I'm trying to prove a formula where one side is relatively simple and the other is a complicated sum, I first try to interpret the sum in concrete terms. For us, we've almost already got our interpretation. It goes similarly to the last video. We have our n students and we hand back their homework paying attention to how many got their own homework back. For any number 0 to all n of the students, let's say k get their homework back. Choose those k and derange the rest. That counts all n factorial ways to hand back the homeworks. But now we have to interpret that k to the r term. The b sub r on the other side of the equation gives us our best first guess. Let's say we have r prizes then k to the r can count how many ways we hand out prizes to the kids who got their own homework back. Do you see why? For each prize, there are k possible students to give it to. So that's k choices for prize number one, times k choices for prize number two, and so on. Let's say it all at once very carefully. The sum counts the number of ways of handing n students' homework back randomly, and handing out r prizes arbitrarily among the students who got their own homework back. For the simple side, we can just shuffle the homeworks into an arbitrary order and put the r prizes into bags. That's definitely counted by b sub r times n factorial. But how do we connect these two scenarios? Let's begin by pulling the first homework off the pile and grabbing the first prize bag. Remember, we have a canonical order for those. Normally, when handing back homework randomly, We'd give the first homework off the pile to Alice, but when giving out a prize, the student also has to be eligible. That means they need their own homework back, so this homework and prize goes to the corresponding student. The second homework off the pile is paired with prize bag 2, so must go to the student corresponding to the homework again. We go about handing out homework prize pairs until we run out of prize bags. For the remaining students, they just get the homeworks back in the order they're stacked on the pile, and we skip anybody who's already got their own homework and a prize bag. Let's look at a second animated example. Here, we're zooming in on the configuration where the pile goes Chloe, Bob, Fred, Alice, Gavin, Dan, then Emma. The prizes are arranged in three bags as shown. The first homework off the pile is Chloe's, so she gets bag 1 and her homework. She has to be eligible to receive that prize bag. Bob gets bag 2 and his homework. Fred gets bag 3 and his homework. But now we're out of prizes, 
so we just hand homeworks back to the students in order. In this case, it happened that Alice was eligible, but didn't win anything. On the sum side, this is a case where k equals 4. Four students got their own homework back. Alice, Bob, Chloe, and Fred. That was a quintessential example showing why the two sides count the same thing. Spend a moment to convince yourself that these two ways of counting prizes handed out to fixed-point students really capture every configuration. Remember, it's a video, so if you need to rewatch a portion, do so. Did you catch the spot where we needed r to be less than or equal to n? It was a little subtle, but if you missed it, go back and see where the proof might break down if r is greater than n. By showing this bell derangement identity, we've seen how the bell numbers give the moments of the fixed point distribution. We've seen these three moment expressions, two raw and one central, all happen to equal one, most notably from this video, the variance. But of course, I can't leave you without posing a challenge. Careful, this is a tough one. The rth bell number is the moment for the fixed point distribution provided n is greater than or equal to r. Is there some meaningful way to interpret the limit of the distribution as n goes to infinity? If everything is right with the world, and you math very carefully, you should end up with some sort of distribution where all the moments are provided by bell numbers. I feel like I may have seen that somewhere.